Okay, so we're going to do a little Zoom recording. Greetings, everybody. This is uh, how I built a clock and file maker. My name's Josh. I'm from Neocode. We make fascinating file maker software solutions. And today I'm going to show you um, how I made an analog clock in FileMaker. So if you go in here to System Preferences on your Mac or wherever you set your clock in Windows, they still show you a nice analog clock. So even in the age that we're in, we still use an ancient clock that's thousands of years old. And it uses the uh, base 12, not base 10 system. Which just adds to the fun. So I was interested in creating that in FileMaker uh, for fun using button bars. And uh, so I did some drawings and I realized I needed a five by five grid to represent the clock. And I needed, uh, because FileMaker can't really rotate um, anything. I needed to have symbols that were, um, you know, not, you know, could be rotated and viewed from any angle and still work. So I found these. Originally, I was going to use some graphics or SVGs, but it was just like way too much hassle. So I just used a font. So these are actually the font characters that I picked. And I'll show you later that um, these are actually, you know, you can configure that. So these are all the different permutations. And then um, I'm just showing you down here that the X is the second hand. So you can, we can watch the second hand sweep. Okay, and then the, um, you can see here HM. So that's the hour and the minute hand. The minute hand and the hour hand. So right now it's it's one o'clock. It says it's like, no, it's 12.05. So it's, between, it's after 12.05 is what it's really saying. So you can see here it's 12.08. So, but you can see that my hesitation, I'm having a hard time reading it because basically what you got to visualize is that there's a line from the center going to this as the hour hand and then a line from here to here going to the minute hand to really read this clock. But that's, that is another matter. Um, but it does tell the time obviously correctly. So I made a grid. So this is basically a five by five grid. So 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 20, blah, blah, blah. So we're in the map table. And the map table has grid as a child table. And so I created the 25 records here in the grid, 1A, 1B, etc. So this one here is 1B. This one here is 2E, 4E, 5C. OK? So this grid is here. And then what I've done is I've made the complications. So there's the main complication and then the tooltip complication. Um, I've made them um, separate so you can evaluate them. So if we just click on the button bar, you can see we've got evaluate the map complication. And then for the tooltip, you can see I've got an evaluate map tooltip. So basically, it's really nice and portable, really easy to maintain and manage. So you're really just managing the clock itself. So if we want to understand, the first thing to do is like understand this, um, you know, the grid column. So that's the key. So basically the, the button, I'll just show you before, I'll just show you like why we're some hidden. So obviously in the button bar, we're hiding. Right, so if there isn't a label hour, so basically if it's not a time position, then it should be hidden. So, you know, these guys, the, all the grids in the center here, they're hidden. These guys should be hidden. I mean, if they weren't, then you could see the, you, you could see the grid, which should be silly. So, and then the next thing is, the next thing you want to see is, so these label minute seconds. So this is just, you know, obviously 
uh, that's the 50 second position. This is the 10 second position, not minute, the 10 minute position. So right now it's, um, well, it's two. So this is the minute hand. So it's pointing, so it's 12, 10, right? So then what we can do, so if you see here, so you got the little hand pointing at the 12 and the big hand pointing at the 10, okay? And then the hand is sweeping. So you can see, and then they're gonna cross. Boom, okay. So let's have a look at the functions that drive this up. So basically all the, all the buttons have the same, this is the values that they have, but they um, look at their row column. They take their position you know, in the grid to determine what to display, um, like what number to display, and then what time display character to display. If we just go in here and have a look at the functions. So the time display here, we've got, let's have a look at the grid. A grid column is just a field, so it just prints it. The label minute seconds, this is where I'm mapping the grid. This is manual. So this, because I've got a five by five grid, I've mapped it like this. So, but if you wanted to display the clock as a linear, just like one to 12, well, obviously you'd change this, you'd map this differently. If you wanted a, you know, a four by three grid, you could also do that. You just change the, uh, the mapping. And then you do the same thing for the hours. So this is the mapping where I'm saying, right? 3A, that center top is 12. So the first time I did it, of course, I got it totally wrong. Um, okay, so the next one is the time display. And this is where I display like what characters, like what font to display. So basically I'm just saying, um, what's the position, you know, what's my, um, so this grid represents this hour and um, this grid represents this, minute second and this grid represents this minute second so it's like this grid is 12 and it's minute second zero and it's minute second zero right for hms so if um if it's actually 12 o'clock so if 12 equals current hour 12 and minute second z is zero and it's actually zero and then the second is zero i'm in the second grid and it's zero then you emit this character. So basically this is just printing out those characters and I go through all the different combinations. So that's basically the, the core logic is right there. Just nice and simple. I love it. So the symbol label to spit out the, you know, that's what needs to get drawn. And then the rounding, though it's actually truncating, not rounding. So here's the, simply, so basically anything between, so if it's like between one and five, it's still five. Between six and uh, 10, it's still 10. So it's like if it's 1255, I mean, if it's 1259, it's still 1255 according to this clock. Cause this, I, cause I've only got a five by five grid. So it's in five minute increments. So if I had a, you know, um, what is it? The next step up, right? Another increment of five, like a 10 by 10 grid. It could be 10 by 10. It should be odd. But anyway, like a seven by seven grid, 11 by 11 grid, whatever, then you can get more, um, you can get a more accurate time. So this clock obviously is only accurate to five minutes. So I could, I guess, you know, you could make more interesting characters 
So like when this right here, this could change uh, color. For example, you know, maybe it could get hotter as it gets closer, but I don't know. That's anyway, it's good enough. So that's the basically that's the clock. So thank you for taking the time to check out FileMaker. Oh, I guess I could show you. Um, so I'll just change the time. Remember to click save. And now that's what it looks like at, um, you know, 11, basically 11.55. It could be 11.56, I don't know, because I only know in five minute increments. And then it's gonna go to, Oh, because it's eleven fifty-seven. So we'll make it go to fifty-nine. Fifty-nine. Uh, fifty-nine. There we go. That's the fun one. I guess they're all fun, but. Right now I have a script timer that basically refreshes. I've got, these are all named portals. So the refresh script just um, refreshes those five portals every second in order to, you know, draw it moving around. So I just realized what I could do for the minutes or the seconds is I could I could count I could add them. So boom. So I could add more. Um, basically, I could add the number. I could increase the number of characters. So for um, like if it was O two on the two minutes, I could so like right now because it's when it gets to 1201, for example, when it gets to 12, maybe 1202 is better. So 12, 1202, I could actually have two of these show up, right? Because that's how I could demonstrate that there's two of them. So, or if it was, you know, 1203, I could have three of them. 1204, there could be four of them. And then when it went to five, it would just start with one of them. So that'd be pretty, that's pretty easy to code. So I could easily do that. So as a way, and then I've got accuracy to the minute without, you know, adding tons of complications. So, yeah. So thanks for watching how to build an analog clock in FileMaker using object-oriented techniques. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks again.